Oh, hi guys, how you doing? Welcome to the Totally Magic channel. Got a great trick for you using a regular deck of cards. Now, it's interesting. Did you know that we tend to recall things a lot easier if we learn them by physical and visual? And what I mean by that, if I was to see something or feel or do something physically, I'm more likely to remember it. And we're going to try something today where you, sir, are going to pick a card, not physically from the pack, you're going to do it mentally. That way you can have a free choice of 52 cards, any one of them, it's your choice. Once you've got a card in mind, we need you to simulate something physical and visually. And by that I mean if you chose, for example, the four of diamonds, you're going to count four cards to represent the value of the card that you're thinking of. So one at a time you would deal one, two, three, four, and then drop the pack on top. However, you're not going to do it in front of me. I'm going to turn around. So at this point, I would either blindfold myself or look the other way. The spectator will now think of any card. The spectator will deal silently, slowly and deliberately the number of cards. Drop the pack on top, square them up. Now the suit. What I'd like you to do is to repeat what you've just done, deal cards one at a time, and you're either going to deal one card if the card you're thinking of is a club, if it's a heart, deal two, if it's a spade, deal three, and four for diamond. and drop the cards on and square them up. All done? Okay, I now turn back to the spectator and I say, I tell you what, you could have chosen any card in this pack. It's currently in your mind, but we know that it's gonna be somewhere in among these cards here. Yeah, so what I'd like to do is think of the visual and the physical you just performed so that you can recall the name of the card. It's currently in your head and I want you to repeat that and in fact what I do is I'll shuffle the cards like that. What I'm going to do is to pull cards off of the pack one at a time and just as you're recalling the value and the suit of your card, just call stop at any time. Stop there. You sure you don't want this one as well? You're happy stopping there. The card you stopped at, you could have gone one more, but you wanted this card here. Out of all of these cards, you had a choice of thinking of any one. You recalled it. What was it? The five of hearts. The amazing thing is, is that that happens to be the card that we have here too. So here's the secret to this fantastic effect. Now it's not an original. Uh, you may recognize this from Penn and Teller Fool Us several years ago. A guy called Joshua J performed a trick, it was called Out of Sight, and he'd done a routine where he pretended that he was blind and he put a, a, a blindfold on and performed it in that way. And if you remember, at the end of his trick, all the cards turned blank. I've missed that out because he used a very special deck of cards for that. These ones are almost regular. Now I say almost, these are what are known as marker cards. I can read what these cards are just by looking at the back. Each card has a marker on it. So I know this is the seven of hearts. Um, I know this one is the 10 of spades, just by looking at the backs. Now, if you don't own a pack of these, it's worth getting these. They're not that expensive and you can pick them up from uh, Amazon, eBay, and other magic dealers. Now, at the end of this 
revelation. I will show you how you can do this without a marker deck, with just normal cards. Now the cards are stacked. If I just spread these, what I've got are Ace to King of Clubs. I've got Ace to King of Hearts, Ace to King of Spades and Diamonds. So I've got Clubs, Hearts, Spades, Diamonds in the chased order. An Ace to King setup. Now, at the start of the trick, I like to demonstrate what I want the spectator to do. I want to make sure they deal cards down. So what I'm going to do is just take four cards from the bottom, reverse their order, and put them on top. The deck set. You then demonstrate, so I would like you, if you chose a four of diamonds, to deal cards slowly and quietly, one at a time, to match the value. Four cards and drop the pack on top. So you've demonstrated that and you've literally just put the cards back into order. Now, this is how it works. What will happen is you turn around, you can put a blindfold on if you prefer, and you ask them to think of any card. And this is great because they can think of any card. There's no force there. Let's say, for example, they were thinking of, uh, let's say, the Four of Spades. Now, if he thinks of the Four of Spades, he's going to deal four cards onto the table. One, two, three, four. And then drop the pack on top. Now, remember that we have a, the, the numbering of clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds. The clubs is one, hearts is two, spades is three, and diamonds is four. So they will then deal that number. So because he's thinking of the four of spades, he will deal one, two, three cards to represent the spade and he drops the rest of the pack on top he squares them you turn back around and what you're going to do you don't have to shuffle them you can if you can do a full shuffle but don't mess up the order i tend to just do a quick cut i don't make a big deal of it it's a false cut on there now when you spread the cards you've got to look at the backs of the cards okay so as i spread these cards and then, as you saw in the routine, I just kind of say, you could have chosen any card. What I'm looking for is the king, okay? And in fact, what I'm looking for is the king of diamonds. Remember, the king of diamonds was the bottom card. Now, I can see from the markings on this, this is the king. So, everything below that is what the spectator dealt. The king is where I start. And all I do is I look, now I can see a four on here. That means that the value of their card was a four. Now that means that he dealt four cards. If I look quickly along here, if I see an ace, then I know however many cards are below the ace tell me the suit. Because there's three cards below this, then... I can tell that it's a spade. So it's a four of spades. That's done. Just to make it easier for you, let me spread these face up. So say if you can now see these. Remember, I'm looking for the king. There it is there. Remember, I'd have the backs to me. So I can see that this is a four. So that tells me the value they selected a four of something. I then look for the ace, because any cards that follow the ace is the suit. Because there's three cards after the ace, I know it was a spade. If there was two cards, it would be a heart, and so on. And that's it. Now, of course, you would be doing this this way around. Now, once I've done that, it takes me literally two seconds just to look at that, and I can see those straight away. I now got to find their card. Once you know the card, you could gather them up and, and say to them, like, I tell you what, just try and concentrate on the image of your card. And you can pick these up and go through because now I know what card they've got. I can just hunt for the card and cut it to the top. So let me just show you this as I go through, I just say, 
yeah, I, I tell you what, rather than me find the card, let's see if you can find it. Now I've got their card to the top. Use your own method for that. I then want to get it to the bottom. You could cut it to the bottom, but I like to shuffle the cards because I'm trying to mess up the order in case they want to examine the cards at the end. So I just slip the top card off, do a shuffle like this, then another shuffle, and you can do a few of these, any fancy shuffle. But the bottom line is, um, I want to get this to the bottom. The more shuffles you can do, the more convincing that they're jumbled up. Remember, at this point, the reason I'm shuffling is in case they do pick the cards up at the end, I want to make sure that they're not in any particular order. Their cards there. What I do is I just get a break. Let me exaggerate this a little bit. I get a break under the bottom card. I then start to pull cards off in a biddle move and they call stop. Now, whenever they call stop, I come back and say, are you sure you don't want this card as well? What I'm gonna do is to drop that card on top. They're gonna say no. Whenever you try and force it onto and say, look, are you sure you don't want this one? They're gonna say no. The trick's over, that's their card. You could reveal this anyhow you like, write it down or some other method. But have a play around with that. I think it's a real strong uh, trick using just a regular deck of cards. By the way, if you are gonna use a regular deck, then when you spread the card and say, look, you could have had any, what you could do is just look at the cards, look at the faces, and then see what cards they dealt that will reveal which card it is, find their card, cut it to the bottom or top, and the rest of it is as you saw on the performance. Practice and enjoy.